All right. Hey guys, what's up? It's the both here. One and how all my adventure is doing. Welcome back to another devlog. This is devlog number 30. Actually, we're finally making it into the 30s. But yeah. Uh, in this one, we're going to be getting animations ready for NPCs to get them to start walking. And we're going to be replacing the players' controls that we made at first. Well, yeah, that was the first devlog. Well, not the very first devlog, but the first thing we did in Unity. So now we're going to be doing that. And just a reminder to you all, everything you see in this video is placeholders. Everything will be changed in the futures. If you guys want an even more in-depth look at these tutorials that I am watching and learning from, Game Dev Experiments is teaching people how to make Pokemon games in Unity. So yeah, if you guys are interested in that, do go to his channel and, you know, leave a like, help him out. So with that said, we're just going to go ahead and get started here. I do want to try something later on down in the future to where I do get the Monster Girls animated and actually have them have life towards the game. Uh, that just came into my head just because we're doing the whole animator thing, you know, like getting all the animations ready. But yeah, that's that's like something I want to do in the future. And I already told you guys that I want to do like portraits for when you're talking to characters. That'll be something further along and I'll probably try to get some more emo emotions for them. Just not straight away. Yeah, that's mostly just, I guess, side things that can wait for a long time. To be honest, yeah, that can, that can wait. I can really wait. So I'm not like too gun ho on it right now. But later on in the future, like I said, I want to get the Monster Girls, you know, animated to where they're like actually have life into the game. Will bring life into the game. But like I said, that could be hold off held off too. But as I'm doing it, I was thinking to myself, I want it to be done in a way to where I can have both the plain image for if I don't have the animation and a box for the animation for when I do have it. So let's go at it like this. I want there to be like a little check box. And if the box is checked, it tells me that I have the animations for this and I put it in there and it's automatically working. But if I don't have it, it's going to use the plain image, the still image. Instead, if I don't have it in there, and I don't have the box checked. That's kind of what I want to do in the future. Just keeping this in this video as an idea as I'm talking about anime animations. And I'll come back to it because I do plan on going through and revisiting my devlogs once I'm like caught up. Which will be fun. Um... Right now, we're just giving the NPC actual like animations and movements for like frames, just testing them out. So now we want the AI, well, the NPC to actually have its like own walking animations and walking back and forth, which is, which are going to be fun. And now we're also putting in our own and replacing a lot of the stuff that was inside of player movement, which is player movement is pretty much the player controller. I just named it something else because there was an issue with the other player controller I had. For some reason, it wasn't working, but I made player movement and got that one working. Then I just kept player movement as a name. So it was just like, screw it. <laughs> then. I do want to try and get into like the backgrounds being animated too and actually have the life as well. Maybe put like some little Easter eggs, some secrets in the background of the battlefields. 
Who knows? There's a ton of things that I can do. It's just time consuming. Like, I want this game to be something I can work on for, like, years. As That's basically what I'm thinking. Instead of just having it, like, boom, it's done. Throw it out there. It's just, nah. I want to work on this for, like, as long as possible, to be honest. I want to make it the perfect game that I've been thinking of making for like so long. Okay, here's where we're actually putting in the movements for the AI. Why do I keep saying AI? The NPC. Because I have a lot of ideas I want to put in the game. And maybe other people will have some good ideas too. I do want to add mod support down the road too, but that might be difficult. Who knows? Who knows? We probably we probably could get some mod support. It'd just be weird trying to set that up though. I do want to get a night and day cycle going as well and me figuring out how to uh, change like certain light sources to recognize when it's like daytime and nighttime. Also have like a little timer, sometimes have like little events that go on at certain times. But I think the little time events will probably be like towards like way later on because <laughs> who knows i might want to have like some christmas events that people can do you know or some halloween events i'm not sure if i want to do like exclusive monster girls like a holiday exclusive monster girls especially in like a more single player setting at the moment because i'm not sure yet if i want to like do pvp because you know it's on pc it'll be mostly like having to struggle against getting rid of hackers stuff like that so i think i'm focusing more on a single player aspect right now there probably could be pvp in the future probably slight chance either that or i can have challenges sort of like a Bray Frontier. Wait, no. That's, that's the wrong thing. I'm thinking of actual Bray Frontier, the game that fucking died, right? <laughs> I mean, the Battle Frontier. That, that's what I was thinking of. Sort of like the Battle Frontier. Battle Frontier was actually kind of fun in a way. I just don't want it to be as difficult as the Battle Frontier. <laughs> it was like very unbalanced and very odd. But, you know, I could do that. Or I can do, like, a tower thing to where you're, like, climbing 100 towers and get, like, special rewards and some shit like that. That, that could also be fun. <laughs> Who knows? There's a lot of things that I can do here. And it could be, you know, pretty interesting for people. But that's, like, future ideas, dude. I have so many ideas in my brain, I don't know what to do with them. <laughs> I'm thinking about starting to, uh, what is it? Tello? T Tello? It's, it's some site that allows me to make, like, some roadmap. Or at least keep, like, track of things I want to look at or add. So I think I'm going to look into that and make, like, a whole roadmap. And just, you know, get that into my head. And, you know, I'll pick for those ideas in the future. Instead of, like, just having them swirl around in my brain and forget them later. Because <laughs> I know I will. I always do. So now I'm pretty sure I don't I'm I'm not sure if it went to the next session because I went on a whole rant that, talking about like things I could add. 
I think we're still on, you know, cleaning up the code and changing everything. Now that we have a character animator as a code, we got to go through a lot of this stuff and, you know, change it out. This was actually quite interesting getting NPCs to move, but now that we have like the the easy stuff to get them to move, it's actually like very nice to just put them in a certain pattern and just watch them go. We also made it to where they don't d divert paths and just go into a random way. It's sort of like how a uh, RPG maker is, you know, how if you stop their NPCs. If you stop in front of the NPC's face, it'll just pick a different direction. So you can literally get trapped or soft locked, trapped by them or something. Some crazy stuff like that. We got, uh, I'm happy that he taught me how to get rid of that because I was thinking about that too. Because RPG Maker does it a lot. I'd rather have it the same way that Pokemon had it to where the NPCs just stop and wait for you to move the hell out of the way so they can continue moving the path that they were they were set to I'm gonna try and make it to where they don't soft lock the hell out of you <laughs> I'm missing the dot here I'm pretty sure yeah there we go <laughs> And then we have to change layering to different things too later on. Because now we have to have encounter check for the player movement now. So now that we have the character's animation going on. We have the, made the whole game layer plugin and put everything new inside of the game layers. I don't know why I put like <laughs> soldiers or soldiers or I don't know what the fuck I was trying to spell there, but I definitely did a oopsie and I realized it like way later on. <laughs> I was just sitting here like, what the heck am I spelling? <laughs> That's not right. <laughs> My brain is just pretty much just turned off when it comes to like certain spellings I don't know why but yeah it was interesting learning this yeah I realized I spelled it wrong there you go <laughs> then I start fixing it <laughs> I was like what what was I trying to spell there am I stupid <laughs> The answer is yes. <laughs> and now that we have layers, we got to make sure that we initiate it. And we deleted a little bit of the useless stuff here. Oh yeah, there's one issue with the whole... Uh, trying to get NPCs from colliding into like other objects and stuff like that that only messed up because I realized that my models and houses well I can't even say my models the, um, the sprite images that I'm using and my my house sprites my house sprites and the sprite models that I'm using 
are way too large. This actually should be a lot smaller than this, apparently. I realize because it's it's screwing up in one of the coatings, but I, I could have changed it in one of the coatings, but I didn't want to. <laughs> so instead, I just shrunk all of this down and zoomed in the camera and faces still look the same. So <laughs> that, that's all I can tell you. So yeah. So now we gotta make sure game layers knows like where every other layer is. We set a speed to our character and now we test to see if we're moving. Nope, I broke something. So now I go through all my coding again just to make sure and look and see what I broke. When I break something, I don't look, I, I remember saying this in a different video, but when I break something, I don't go back and look through game devs video. I try and find it myself first. But if I can't find it myself, I do look back through the videos and try to match them up. So funny enough, this, this one was actually kind of simple. Yeah, I just, I just had that as a capital. <laughs> no, that's what, that's what it was. Yeah, just this, this was capitalized. I changed it to an A and everything worked. <laughs> Easily overlooked it. Oh, whoops. Did I go back too far? Okay, I don't know if I did, but, you know, it's there. It's, fuck it. So now we gotta take out the animator and put is moving. Oh yeah, I remember this. It it was the fact that animator for some reason is acts weird with the old sprite thing. So every time I moved, it looked like my character was gliding. Like the animation was way too fast. So I remember that we had to change change it from the animator using it to is moving of our own coding instead and that worked a lot better. So now we're just putting the finishing touches on it. And the first section should be over with soon. I think this was about like two or three hours worth of two videos that I was working, well, working with. So we're turning off the dialogue system just so we can test. The movement of the NPC. Giving him his animations. Okay. What are you doing up? I didn't even click anything. That just threw me off. <laughs> I thought I thought that was part of the video at first. So we clicked on NPC, he moved up, instead of activating the dialogue. So, the animations are working. So NPCs can move. Make sure he can't walk through the houses.
And now we're working on, I think we're working on the actual, like, hold on. I don't remember when I actually see it. I think he's supposed to move here, right? Oh yeah, I missed the plus. Okay, yeah. He's moving in a certain direction. So now we have the NPC moving in a certain direction. So now we're setting up the patterns so the NPC can know like what patterns to walk through. Oh, I guess we are on the next stage. Huh. It's kind of weird. I, I, I guess I looked away too long and I missed my little black screen cue. Yeah, that are just. I just keep forgetting that I'm fast forwarding and those screens don't last too long. <laughs> I should also leave them alone. I should just put them in there and not change their like size or anything just because, like I said, I'm speeding, I'm speeding up the footage. There's no reason for that. It just makes the presentation a lot quicker. So I started missing things. Or maybe, I, like I said, I made a mistake and missed one or didn't, didn't cover it. But this one is getting it to walk and animate it and walk around everywhere. If we are in that section, which we should be. So now we can give it routes and patterns of which to walk. And between time is how many seconds is the NPC on the wait before it moves. So that's three seconds. Okay. And we interact with it and he's still moving through us. So we got to stop that. When the dialogue is showing, we want the NPC to stop moving. Okay, the NPC is no longer moving when we're talking to him. And plus, okay, here's another one. Oh, I, I just realized that I pushed space over here on my uh, OBS and it blinked me out. I didn't even realize it until now, but that's fine. Uh, keep NPCs moving when chatting with other NPCs, because when I chat with one NPC, the other NPCs keep moving. and I want them to face my direction when we're interacting with them. So that makes this makes sense because Pokemon also does the same thing. You have NPC still moving when chatting with them. If I didn't have them moving, it's kind of like, you know, the game paused when I'm chatting with it. I want, you know, the NPCs to at least have a little bit of life in them like Pokemon does. I think that was a good idea that they took an approach to. I always have them moving. Uh, and look towards the player gives them also more life too. So I did, I did miss like one of them because this is the last one I believe. Yeah, this is the last section. So I, I did miss one of my little, my little break-ins. <laughs> so that one was getting the patterns ready, making actual like walking patterns for the NPCs. This one is. You know, all that. All the finishing touches of NPC. The next, the fun part comes is trainers. We're actually going to start making trainers the next devlog. It'll probably take another like three or four days or probably next week. Who knows? Like I, I'm trying to like just do all of like the actual sections of it. So if he's going through like we're going to make a shop and there's like three different videos involving the shop. I like to do that instead. 
just because I think it's a lot more fun to have all of those videos of the shop in one video and talk about them. Plus, it also gives me a lot of ideas for my shop as well, because I want to make like an animated like portrait of like the shopkeeper. And I already know what I kind of want the shopkeeper to look like. But like I said, that comes down later in the road. Don't know why I'm still uh, still talking about this. <laughs> I'm still talking about later plans, dude. There's so many ideas in my head. I gotta stop. Hopefully there will be some uh, Fiverr people who will actually help implement that into the game. When I don't have time to, you know, work on the game myself. Because I'm gonna start, you know, I'm thinking about getting a second job soon. So that will help of hiring other de developers or at least coders for uh, my game. Then when I have downtime, I can do like the world building and stuff like that. Coding was just take a lot at that point. But it really depends on if I have to get a second job. That and I can either that or I can go back into content creation while also letting the game be, you know, on the DL. So you guys don't know too much about the game, but it's still being worked on. And maybe I'm just distracting you guys with my own videos, you know, who knows? <laughs> okay so what just happened there is the NPC just walked through me as I was blocking your path so we gotta stop that cause if you guys didn't see I got stuck I couldn't move <laughs> inside of her so that was annoying so we're gonna make if the path is clear the NPC will check and see if there's anything in front of it. And if there isn't something in front of it, it will skip into its next into its next pattern. But then again, we don't want that. We want it just to sit there, so we do that later. We want it to sit there until the thing moves. It's crazy how I remember a lot of this by heart. <laughs> Cody's going to be a little bit more difficult to do. I know when I start making another game by scratch without tutorials, it's not going to be as well coded as this. Because I, I want to experience how it is like doing like coding how everybody else does as well, as well as this, and come back and learn this over again. I need to make their collision box a lot bigger because just walking up on her like that looks very strange and weird. So the NPCs are stuck here. They can't, for some reason, this is what I was talking about. The coding that I put in they cannot go upwards because of the squarings. It's going by the grid here of how big the grid is. And that box is, as you'll see, is very small. And my character starts doing it too. I'm thinking it's their, probably their placements or they're just recognizing each other in a way. It's not. It's just grid size. So yeah, this is why I'm thinking that they just see each other and they're stopping it. No, that's not the case. I learn more about this once I get to my 
to putting the controller onto my character. And once it's on my character, I realize that it's just way too big. I start changing this, trying to figure out what's going on here. It was nothing to do with these. It was just at my boxes. That was just inside of multiple boxes. Me and NPCs both were inside of multiple boxes instead of just like one box on the grid. That's what it was. That's how I should explain it. And you'll see that I lowered everything, but I forgot to record that part of me changing the size of everything. So I just decided to talk about it here because I do forget. <laughs> I do be forgetting. So now I add myself the player to this list. And I add players to the layers so the game can recognize that I'm also a layer, dude. We all have layers, you know. <laughs> And this is where the issues started to happen, that I realized what my NPCs are going through. I thought it was just normal. And maybe we were just going to fix it later. It was not the case. I thought it might have been in my collision box, but no, I cannot go up here. I can only go left and right. So now I'm confused and panicking, no, trying to figure out what the issue is. And I think I skipped here. Okay, now nah. we're still going. I'm looking at the timer down here just to make sure I didn't just time skip. Oh yeah, then I start yeah playing with those uh settings. That way I couldn't move at all. Just playing with everything, just seeing if there was an interesting issue going on here. I ended up changing these back to two. So as you can see there, that's when I, when I shrunk everything. It's actually funny because everything looks a lot sharper now that I shrunk everything. As you can see, everything looks a lot sharper now that I shrunk everything, which is great. Now I just shrunk the camera. And now everything's fully fixed. I can move around. And we still have the same settings that we coded in. It was just that I was outside of a box. As you can see, I was not inside of this box. I was a lot larger to this to where I was inside of this, this, I was inside of like six different boxes. So I shrunk myself down to one box and now everything is working for, for grid. It's annoying trying to do this because grid doesn't stay up when you're trying to shrink yourself. Maybe there's a setting on it that stays. Maybe I could push lock and, you know, shrink them down. I totally didn't think about that actually, but yeah, that problem would have worked, but you know what? Fuck it. I fixed it. Everything's good. Everything's working. NPCs aren't colliding through shit, aren't colliding into me. Well, aren't like going through the next pattern thanks to me being in front of their faces, stuff like that. Everything's working fine, Ed. Everything's working fine. I just gotta remember to shrink everything. Once I place it, that's the only issue. I started playing around with a little bit of a grid. Just seeing what I can do and can't do. 
There's a lot of things you can't do with the grid. <laughs> There's a lot of things you shouldn't do with the grid too. So now we're making the NPCs face towards us once we talk to them. Just so we just so they know we exist and are just talking to them there like total weirdos. The final monster girl should be done. I want to say next week. It's either next week or no, it should be next week or just about the end of this week. Who knows? More than likely next week. Then I can do like the final starter, you know, showcase. Then we're going to start getting into characters. The first thing I want to do is the rival because I have the rival. One of the rivals. Completely thought out of my head, information gathered, et cetera, et cetera. Then I want to start on the actual like player down the road. All right, and we're done there. Hopefully you guys enjoyed devlog number 30. I'll be heading over to devlog 31 tomorrow because I'm going to bed. It was fun until then. I will see you guys on the next one. Peace out.